What is the PEO model and why should you know about it? Stay a while and listen. The PEO model is a framework used by occupational therapists to understand and address the, the various factors that can impact a person's ability to engage in meaningful activities or in occupations as we say it. The PEO model consists of three interrelated components. First we have the P that stands for person or process. Then we have the E which stands for environment and then we have the O which stands for occupation, normal language activities. Let's start with person slash process. This refers to the cognitive, emotional and physical processes that a person uses to engage in activities. And this includes things like attention, perception, memory and motor skills, you know, how you physically function, as well as psychological and social factors. Next up we have environment. This refers to both physical and digital, social, uh, cultural environment that you live in. For example, how you design your workplace, your living room and stuff like that. But also the cultural and personal values and beliefs that can impact a person's ability to engage in activities. Finally, there is the O, which stands for occupation. This refers to the occupations or activities that a person engages in on a daily basis. It's basically any activity that you do slash are engaged in. Engage in. The PEO model is based on the idea. All three components need to be addressed to improve or have the optimal experience in activities. We as occupational therapists use the PEO model to try to understand the complex interplay of these three factors and try to address any barriers or challenges that a person may experience to fully engage in meaningful activities. I, I don't know why I'm, I'm squinting with my eyes. With that said, how can you apply the PEW model to your daily life? And here is some actionable steps for you. The first, reflect on your processes. Take some time to think about what activities you engage in on a daily basis. Are there any areas that you want to improve? And by that I mean, do you want to spend more time doing some specific things? Or do we want to avoid other things? Or do you experience any difficulties or problems with the activities that you do on a daily basis? Is it cooking? Is it not really working for you? Are you ending up ordering? take out most of the time because you don't really know how to cook or is it hard to just work in the kitchen due to everything is spread out you don't really know where things is do you don't really know how to challenges or problems doesn't really have to be these big obstacles in our ways sometimes it's just tiny tiny bits of friction in our daily life that can really mess up a lot of things. For example, in a long time I have avoided making these videos because I didn't have any light. Actually, I, I did have light because they are in another room and they are difficult to get. So just improving the likelihood of achieving something. Number two, consider your environment. Look at your physical, digital, social, cultural environment. Are there any changes you can make to improve your likelihood to engage in these activities? Or are there any changes that can improve your experience, your efficiency? For example, if you want to cook, is your kitchen clean? If it's messy, it's likely you might not get into the activity. Are there any beliefs in your environment? And by that I mean your friends, family, co-workers, are there any beliefs and values that are compromising your ability to engage in activities? Just write a few notes. You don't have to create a long essay about all of this. Just write a few points down on the paper. It's just nice to be able to see the problems and stuff that you want to improve instead of just always thinking about it.
Number three is about identifying your occupation slash activities. Make a list of the activities that you engage in on a daily basis. And this might include self-care, leisure activities, work. And think about each of these activities and how they contribute to your overall well-being and quality of life. And you might discover that some of the activities is actually not helping you live the life that you want. And if there are any activities that are limiting you in living the life that you want, then maybe you should try to avoid the activities or spend less time on these. Number number four, <laughs> identify any barriers or challenges. Now that we, you, have written down a few things on each of these components, take a look at each of the activities that you have identified and think about, am I facing or experiencing any difficulties to engage fully in these activities and enjoying them? And this might include things like physical limitations, time constraints or lack of resources. Number five, the last step, develop strategies. Once you have identified any barriers or challenges that you are facing, try to come up with ideas that help you overcome the obstacles. Maybe you need to change a few, maybe you need to change a few things in your environment and maybe you need to adapt to your situation and do some activities in other ways that you are used to. Or maybe just find activities that actually suits you and your lifestyle. And remember, the peer model is all about just understanding this complex interplay, process, environment and occupation and finding ways to overcome challenges in our daily lives so we can fully engage in the things that we really want to. And now, take action. Bye.